What's up my soldiers, it's Bob Leander, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about air sickness. So the other day I got a message from one of my subscribers. He's an enlisted guy up in Alaska. He just went for his first flight in a small aircraft, and guess what? He got air sick and he threw up in the plane. So of course, immediately he's thinking, I don't know if I wanna commission anymore and become a pilot. Uh, this might not be for me. And I had to explain to him that air sickness is something that the Air Force expects you to do. It's a normal thing to happen and there's procedures for it. And even if you're not trying to be an Air Force pilot, this video can help you and I can give you some tips. So first let's talk about what air sickness is. Air sickness is when your eyes, which you know your body relies on 90% of the time for situational awareness, for sensing where you are and your spatial awareness, when your eyes don't match up to what your inner ear feels. So your inner ear, that's how you get your balance, that's how you get your orientation. You kind of know where you are in space. Uh, and your surroundings but in an airplane our bodies haven't evolved to be upside down in a cloud at night you know doing turns so uh, our inner ear doesn't match up to what we see so especially in those small aircraft you have those instruments with the dials that are hard to read instinctively as you first start flying so of course new students you're constantly looking down at this stationary instrument panel and you're not looking outside so you're turning you're doing this and that and your body is sensing your airplane moving, but your eyes are seeing a stationary instrument. You know, I might be weird, but the closer I live to an airport, the happier I am. I know a lot of people, they hate airplane noise, but if I can live on the runway, I would. But anyways, that doesn't match up, it doesn't groove, and your body starts to feel that it's actually been poisoned. So it reverts back to kind of that old evolutionary instinct that if you start feeling queasy, you might be poisoned, you might have ate something that wasn't good, so your body wants to throw up. You start experiencing cold sweats, you start to maybe burp, you start to feel clammy, nauseous, you might start feeling it's like you're gonna throw up, excessive saliva, and that's called passive air sickness. So passive air sickness is just when you start to feel queasy. Active air sickness, as I'm sure you can imagine, is when you start actually being productive, and you need to get out that air sickness bag and fill it up. And that's totally okay. If this is your first time flying, if it's your 15th time flying, the Air Force especially expects this to happen and there's protocol for that. So there's two factors that come into play with air sickness. You either have high sensitivity or low adaptability or some combination of the two. If you have a high sensitivity and a high adaptability, like me, your very first time flying after a very long time, you might be passively air sick, but you get over it quickly, you adapt quickly, and then your second, third, after that, you're good to go. If you have a high sensitivity and a low adaptability, that means that you're probably gonna throw up your first couple of flights and it's gonna take you longer for your body to get used to being in an airplane. For these people, that's typically when you start throwing up and you start getting onto Commander's Awareness Program, CAP, which isn't a bad thing, it's just, okay, we're gonna start putting you on the early morning flights when the weather's typically calmer, we're gonna keep an eye on you, you might get put into the Baraday uh, chair. And the Baraday chair is a motion sickness chair that spins around and has all these bars on it. Hello? You want to do a demo? Yeah. Okay. Which one do you want to do? I'll do the Coriolis. Coriolis. Yeah. Coriolis. Okay, that one That's has... the worst one. But... Okay, I'll just spin you. You know what to do. All right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Have you been flying it? No, I don't fly till December. Oh, so we're just going to do a custom. Why are you recording? Can I ask? Oh yeah, so I have a YouTube channel. It's called Wild Blue Yonder, like the Air Force song. Okay. And I I started it like 10 years ago when I enlisted. And it's just like, hey, here's how you join the Air Force. This is what I do. Well, now I'm in pilot training, so I'm talking about this. And then a couple of people reached out and they were like, hey, what about air sickness? Like, what do, what do people do? Let's put it in the chair. Yeah, they put you in the chair. A few moments later. Whenever you want to flip your head. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me. I said you got it. You can right. flip your head. Oh. <laughs> Is it rough? How'd that feel? It feels like somebody poked your brain. Okay, what's your favorite po uh, football team? The Eagles. Okay. We'll accept it. Alright, do you want to do it whatever? No, but oh. I say you too. When I, I'm going to stop the chair and you're going to put your hands up, okay? Like a field goal. And you're going to say your favorite football team, okay? And then we'll do it. Alright, and go. Alright, go birds. Oh. <laughs> Great job. You did really good! <laughs> that was a lot longer than what we did. I was expecting like the quick little bird. Close your eyes. Yes. Is it worse now? Close them. Is it no, worse? Your eyes are what? kind of fluttering. Like, I can see your eyelids. Yeah. It was just worse at first. Yeah. So just 
just like swing off. You to did the side. really well. You, you did. Yeah. Um, that's so and it's basically like a torture chamber, and they just spin you around and until your body gets used to it. Of course, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that, but they basically try to get your motor sensory system to get used to flying. So for the Air Force, it's this whole program. that They have medicine that they can give you that can subside your motor sensory system. There is ginger. They can give you ginger. They can make sure that you're eating very bland meals. If you're a civilian, here are some tips. Make sure that you eat very bland. So water, bread, rice, a banana, very simple diet before you go fly. Don't go in there eating a hot dog with double mustard and thinking that it's going to be okay. Second, keep your eyes outside of the plane as much as possible. If you are flying, your eyes should be outside 90% of the time anyways. It's gonna make you a better pilot. If you are focused on those instruments, then it's not gonna be good for you to be focused on those and flying because it's not gonna match up to what your body feels. Third, if your IP, your instructor pilot is flying and you start feeling queasy, let them know. Say, hey sir, hey ma'am, I don't feel too good. Can you level out the plane? Can you stop doing steep turns? Can we just like level out for a second or even better, let them give you the control so that way what you're feeling is expected and you can kind of match up what you're, what you're seeing to what you're feeling with the controls. Fourth, you can actually chew gum, that can help you. Fifth, breathe through your nose, out of your mouth. If you start hyperventilating, that can actually make you feel worse. So slow down your breathing, look outside, try to calm down and get your bearings. Sixth, and last, keep flying. Like just get out there with more experience, you'll start to get more comfortable in the jet and you won't start getting air sickness as quick or as often. If you're going to be in the Air Force, man, just give it your best shot. There's very few people who get kicked out because of air sickness. It's a very uncommon thing. So good luck to you all. Hopefully this video can help. If you all have any questions, leave them down in the comment box below. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.